Dahl is known to generations of children as the man that brought them magical stories like Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, Danny the Champion of the World, and James and the Giant Peach. Many people remember his stories from their childhood. Um, I've got a few favourites. There's um, Matilda, the witches, James and the Giant Peach. They're so fantastic and different. It's like going into another world. Um, I used to read a lot of Roald Dahl when I was little and I had a lot of Roald Dahl read to me by my, my parents. Uh, he's very funny, he's a very witty author. He makes good stories for children and for adults. The BFG, um, the big friendly giant, is about the big monster <laughs> and he, he goes around catching dreams. I can't even I can't remember. remember. I think my dog ate that book. <laughs> I've taught Roald Dahl two children. I read four or five of his books, and the ones that I taught were uh, Danny, Champion of the World, um, which I think is probably my favourite of, of all his books. But they're great children's books. Children's love, the children love them, and it's great to be able to teach them to, to children who want to learn, who want to know. And he's, he's a great man. I love his books. I think they're great. He invented his own words. And he wrote about fantastic places and people. By the end of the 20th century, people had bought over 35 million copies of his books. At the Roald Dahl Museum and Story Centre, you can learn more about him and his world. Gemma Holland works at the centre. She explains why Dahl's stories are still popular today. I think that the children still find the same things funny as they found funny 50 years ago. And I think that Roald Dahl had a really amazing way of being able to reach the children, but also be able to reach the adults that were reading with the children. So the humour isn't just for the child, but it's also for the parents or the adult reading with that child. And I think that is a massive appeal as well for, for everybody. Roald Dahl's parents were Norwegian but they had left Norway to live in Wales before Roald was born on the 13th of September, 1916. Dahl wrote about his childhood in his autobiography, Boy. He told many stories about being naughty at school. When he was only nine years old, Roald's mother sent him to boarding school, a long way from home. He was terribly homesick, and he wrote her letters nearly every day. Although he was lonely and unhappy, his letters were always cheerful and full of stories. And school wasn't all bad. A chocolate company sometimes sent new sweets for students to test. This gave Roald a lifelong love of chocolate and became the inspiration for Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Roald Dahl absolutely loved chocolate and whenever he ate them, instead of just throwing the wrappers away, he actually kept them and he would scrunch them all together to make a silver ball and he actually kept that ball as a little souvenir on his desk next to him when he wrote. Roald wasn't the best student at school, but he was always good at sport and he enjoyed adventure. He didn't go to university after he finished school. Instead, he started working for an oil company. They sent him to Africa. Then World War II broke out and Roald Dahl saw this as another part of an adventure. So he actually joined the Royal Air Force and he became and, and learnt to fly a plane. Um, and he actually flew a variety of different planes, tiger moths, hurricanes, gladiators. And um, unfortunately, uh, Roald Dahl was actually involved in quite a serious accident when he crashed his plane in the desert and he was very badly injured. And all of that adventure actually led to his first ever published piece of writing. And it was called Shot Down Over Libya. By this time, Dahl already knew how to tell a great story. 
He wrote a dramatic report about his accident while he was recovering in the United States. He described how the Germans had shot him down. But really, he had crashed because he had run out of fuel. Dahl had moved to the United States in 1942. He was working as a TV presenter when he met his wife, Patricia Neal. She was a film star. They married in 1953 and moved back to England. The couple lived in the small town of Great Missenden and they had five children. By the 1960s, he had become a very successful short story writer. At this time, most of his stories were for adults. Then the first story that he wrote for children was called The Gremlins, and it was all about little creatures that got inside the engines of planes and caused them to crash and break down. And it was after that story and after the success of that story that he started writing stories for children, including those famous ones such as James and the Giant Peach, and then obviously Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Millions of children have heard or read the stories of Roald Dahl. But at the Roald Dahl Story Centre, they encourage young people to write their own stories. Gemma explains. I think storytelling is important because it helps to make life more interesting. Around the museum, there are lots of things to inspire young writers. So how did writers like Dahl turn their ideas into a story? Roald Dahl um, always wrote his ideas down in, in his ideas books that he kept with him at all times. And he actually had some ideas in his notebook for 20 years before he used them. And Dahl always wrote in the same way. He always wrote in his writing hut, and I'm sitting in his replica chair right now, and we're surrounded by lots of really interesting things that he kept in his writing hut. Dahl always wrote with a pencil. So he would sharpen six of them, and then he would sit down to write on his special yellow paper. Everything he did, he wrote by hand. He would write for two hours every morning, and then he would stop for lunch, and then he would write for two hours every afternoon as well. Roald Dahl died in 1990, at the age of 74. One of the last lines he wrote was, those who don't believe in magic will never find it. I think that's a lovely way to finish off his last book, basically saying that if you believe in magic, you will find it. And I think storytelling definitely helps us to keep that magic alive. 